This is a review of PictoColor's iCorrect Edit Lab Pro 6. I'm going to quickly go through a series of three images showing you different degrees of changes that this software is capable of doing. While it is a plugin for Photoshop, the best part is that it's also a standalone program. And because of this, you don't even need Photoshop to do any of these changes I'm about to show you. I am using Photoshop because I will be doing some comparisons that will show you the differences that this program can do, what the competition does, and what's built into Photoshop. Here's a perfectly good image. There's not too many changes that need to be done with it. If I go Filter, Pick the Color, I Correct, Edit Lab Pro 6, you're faced with a window with uh, several different options. And the uh, first step is going to be to select the neutrals. So I'm going to select an area in here that is neutral, and I'm just going to click right here. It doesn't matter where I click exactly, just somewhere in a neutral tone. And at this point, I don't even need to worry about all this other stuff. And for the most part, I'm not even going to go into any of that for this review. I'm going to go to the next tab. At this point, I get to manually adjust the white points and the black points. What I really like about it is that it has a level tool that allows me to fine tune what I actually want the program to do. So for example, if I grab this point right here, I'm bringing all the whitest points and blowing them out. If I go the other way, I'm making all the darks dark. And the one in the middle allows you to adjust whether you want the midtones darker or lighter. And that'll change depending on the image. Now also notice that I was even able to grab these points and bring them outside of the image. So I'm able to actually go one step farther than Photoshop allows me to and make them just a little bit lighter or a little bit darker than the original image. So in this, in this case, I'm just going to give it a little bit of darkness. Then I'm going to come in from the other side. I don't want to do too much of anything because uh, this image looked pretty good as it was. So I'm just going to leave that at 100. And then the only question really was, do, where do I want my midtones to go? So now because this image was too bright because of the flash, I'm going to darken the midtones a bit to help it out. I'm going to click on the next tab, and then here I can adjust the global brightness and contrast and saturation and such. Similar to the last tab, but it is a bit different in that I can grab the shadows and I can brighten them. Notice it's just grabbing the darkest areas, or I can darken them. Same thing with the highlights. I can grab the highlights and darken them or over brighten them. So in this case, once again, I want to pull back on the highlights a little bit to try and balance out this uh, shine that was happening on the face. And then I'm going to give a little bit of an overall saturation to the image. And then I'm going to go to the final tab, and this is where I can adjust the colors. So for example, if I click on toning, this comes up, and the move that I make is going to be a global move, so it's going to affect the entire image. So from here, I just want to put a little bit more red in and a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to click OK, but then what I can do with this dropper is it's going to change on this wheel the area that I selected. So for example, if I click there, it grabbed that point. If I was to grab uh, the hair, it's going to move around based on where I select. So in this case, I'm going to grab there, and I'm going to pull back on this saturation. Now what was too much is now less and now the image is looking okay so because everything is in one little area I can jump around a bit so I can go back to here and adjust the uh, neutral point if I found that I needed to I can come back over here I can adjust the brightness of the image if I want to and then I can adjust the saturation or any of these other sections here since this image doesn't have a lot of color in it, I really can't go spinning around the wheel and uh, select different areas. 
But as you can imagine, if this was an outdoors, I could be grabbing blues and greens and yellows and all across the spectrum. And that would be really great. So anyway, um, I'm just going to uh, put that back. I like that image right there. And then I'm going to uh, skip all this other stuff uh, because that's not needed for this review. And then I'm going to click that button. And then it shows you the change that I made. This is how it was, where it was too bright. And this is what I did to it. Overall, it's a nice change, as well as I uh, also noticed that I pulled some of the yellow out as well. Uh, there was a little bit yellow going on. Um, might be hard to see in the video, but there's definitely a cast here. By doing that, it's a nicely balanced image. The next photograph that I want to show you takes it one step further where it could have been a good image, but it has some difficulties, where it, the colors are very muted and half her face is in shadow. So uh, once again, I want to go up to uh, the filter, pick the color, I correct, Edit Lab Pro 6. Now here, once again, I'm going to select a neutral. So I'm going to go with In Her Teeth. Then I'm going to go to the next tab. And here, I can brighten up the image. And then I can go another tab and I can add saturation into the image to give it that color punch that it needs. And I can pull down on these highlights just a little bit because it's a little bit on the bright side. But also I can open up that shadow area as well to try and balance the image out just a little bit. And then I can come to the last tab and I can click in the shadow here. It's going to grab that part of the red and I can pull back on the saturation that I added. So the reason that I'm adding it on this tab as a global move is because it's adding color to the eyes and the lips and then over on this tab I'm selecting a specific color and then pulling back. So for example if I click up here in the hair now it grabbed this instead of that one. Now notice that I can brighten the hair, I can pull back on the saturation, and then I can say OK to that. And there you can see a huge difference in the image. Brightened up the whole thing, and it's looking really good. Now with this last image that I have to show you, this is the most interesting one of them all. I love saving the best for last. Now this image, as you can see, could have been a really great picture. Great shot. She's got the look on her face, but the whole picture is underexposed. Completely ruined. Terrible. So what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to go up under the Pick the Color, I Color Edit Lab Pro 6. Now we're going to choose a neutral right down there. Then I'm going to go to the next tab where I can grab this white. I can bring it all the way over here. Totally brightening up this image. I can grab the midtones. I can open those up as well. Now, does Photoshop have this feature? Yes, it does. But keep in mind, this program works as a standalone as well. You don't need Photoshop to actually use this. I'm going to go to the next tab. And once again, I can go with this global brightness, and by doing this, I can open up all the hair as well. So what I'm going to do is this global brightness, I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to come back over here and darken it down a little bit so that her skin tone wasn't nearly as uh, bright. I can open up in the shadows as well. Remember, this is grabbing just the darker areas. And then give the highlights just a little bit more pop. Now again, I'm going to give it a saturation boost overall. Then I can come back into here, click with the eyedropper, 
and then pull that saturation back on just the flesh. Now these images were all in the same color range, but again, if this was an outdoor scene, I can be more selective with the colors. And then I'm going to click that button, and as you can see, it just saved that image. Huge difference. Now I want to show you one more image that I've already worked on. Now it's the same image. The only difference here is that this first layer that you're looking at was done with Pictacolor's iCorrect Portrait 2. Now I went through the motions with that program and this is what I was able to generate. Not bad. Then I went to Edit Color, the same one that you just saw. And again, very similar. The difference between these two programs is iPortrait is a simpler program uh, geared towards flesh tones. Uh, the Edit Lab program has more features actually has a ton more features, giving you greater uh, detail and adjustment. And I strongly recommend the Edit Lab if you're going to make the choice. Now I want to show you that while both of these are pretty close, this is the competition. This is what I opened up in the competitions program and I never could save it. This was the best I got. And uh, yeah, as you can imagine, I was a little uh, surprised when that was the best that the other software came up with. So just want you to keep that in mind. Um, and the last layer I want to show you, it's actually a group of layers. This is uh, me working on the image exclusively in Photoshop. I'm doing my own uh, professional retouching. And now in this case, I was able to get the color a little bit brighter, uh, the, the contrast a little bit better, but that's only because I worked on several different layers to actually do this. It took me one, two, three, four different layers using four different adjustments it's just to bring it into the same ballpark that the other program did very quickly and very easily. In this case, was I able to mimic it directly in Photoshop? Yes. But again, this Edit Lab program does not need Photoshop. It does not need professional experience to even know how to use any of these tools. You don't need to know where everything is and you don't need to how to work it. Everything was laid out in that easy to use simple interface. One last thing I want to show you before I let you go is going to be the smart color feature. If I go and take this uh, original image and I go to the program again and I click smart color, I'm all done. That was it. Basically it went through all those different tabs and it removed the yellow cast, it brightened up the image, did a color balance, and we're all done. I'm going to show you this image too. Once again, I will go back into the program, click Smart Color, and we're done. And then even this last image that has all this trouble with it, I'm just going to go back into the program one last time, click Smart Color. Now granted, this image isn't all done, but that's a huge improvement from what it was, and it only took me, what, three seconds to do it? So it's very easy to get into a batch mode and just start knocking out these images one after another and not having to put any real heavy work into this. So in the end what it comes down to is that if you're someone that doesn't know Photoshop, doesn't want to know Photoshop, doesn't even own Photoshop, I can strongly recommend Pick the Colors iCorrect Edit Lab Pro 6 because uh, this image alone shows you what the program is capable of doing once you take the time to learn all of its in and outs. You can do some very powerful image correction in a very simple to use interface. If you like this video review and would like to learn more about photo retouching, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can learn more tips and tricks on how to become a better photo retoucher.